Nigeria is a land of many bounties, of tremendous human and material resources. But the most quintessential element of that is the human resource itself. That is why in any government's drive to revamp the economy and for the development of the entire nation, the human resource becomes the focal point. So also in these Mohammed Bukhari administration's change agenda, the question for attitudinal change on the part of the individual, the clarion call from the state and its people has always been on the people themselves. Change of in attitude for the good of the country and for better tomorrow. Moment for thought in this discussion takes a look at this change agenda and the need for attitudinal change on the parts of the generality of Nigerians with reflections on the religious perspective. And I have with me eminent Nigerians to speak on this matter. I have in the studio Sheikh Ahmed Abubakar Lemu, a teacher, a scholar and jurist, an imam, an educationist, a preacher and a public commentator and writer and publisher. The Sheikh who was the pioneer Grand Qadi of Niger State is the president of the Islamic Education Trust and chairman council of trustees Islamic Relief Commission office. Sheikh Ahmed Lemu served the nation as the chairman of the presidential panel on the 2011 post-election violence. The Sheikh who is officer of the order of the Niger OON and officer of the Federal Republic OFR holds the King Faisal International Award for his religious service and for his effort towards educational development and initiative in combating religious extremism in Nigeria and beyond. His Eminence, John Cardinal Onaikon, the Catholic Archbishop of Abuja Archdiocese, a former president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, is also a teacher a commentator on public affairs and interreligious matters. He's a publisher, he's an author. The Cardinal, who is a teacher, an educationist, had his doctorate degree in biblical theology. His eminence also served the country as a member of the National Committee for Peaceful 2015 general elections headed by former head of state, General Abdesalami Abubakar. And I am Ali Yubaba Baro. You're welcome. You're welcome to the program, Your Eminence. Thank you. Thank you, Eminence. Sheikh, you're welcome to the Thank program. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me start with uh, Sheikh Ahmad Lemu. As we started from the beginning, Nigeria is a big country. Yes. Not only in Africa, but in the world. Yes. And with, with all the resources we have, yes. and um, the human resource in particular, Yeah. If you hover over the horizon and take a look at Nigeria from independence to date, yes, we had a charter development program. Yes, what do you think could be the main thing that we should focus in? Just as people are talking about the human resource, yeah. what are the values, the yeah. derailing value system that we've neglected? Now yeah. that is derailing, how do we come out of it? Yes. Excellent. Mm. Well, I'm glad to tell you that personally I was lucky to be involved in presidential committees mm. on one thing or another from President Babangida to President Goodluck. Mm. My personal experience in the effort to answer your question and the findings 
of research actually done at the our Institute of Nigeria, hmm. which is under the auspices of Islamic Education Trust, of which I am the national president, we have no doubt that there are three major groups of stakeholders hmm. in Nigerian affairs. These are politicians, businessmen, and so-called clerics. Interestingly, through personal experience and the research I told you, we discovered that each of these three groups of stakeholders have three common objectives. The first, personal selfish interest, regardless of consequences. Secondly, greed for huge sums of money mm. in Naira and dollars. And thirdly, quest for leadership, power, influence, and followership. In the pursuit of those three objectives, there is no God consciousness or consciousness of our accountability before God. Mm. And there is no shame. Yes. So, each stakeholder, individually or collectively, took or continued to take advantage of huge ignorance of authentic teachings of our respective religion, Islam and Christianity. Secondly, each member of stakeholders, individually and collectively, apart from taking advantage of the ignorance of the true teachings of religion, also have not got sense of the love of the nation. Yes. No patriotism, no national thinking. No national. Individualistic tendencies. But when they it. come to speak, mm. they will speak as if that is their goal and that is their motive. Yes. Thirdly, in that respect, we discovered both from personal experience and from research, actual research, that indeed majority of the stakeholders very much, very much, apart from taking advantage of the ignorance on the part of the general public about the authentic teachings of religion, they have no respect for God and for even the nation. Yes. So, I can put semicolon there, and where there is no God consciousness, mm. and no consciousness of accountability before God, and no shame, mm. it reminds me of one of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, if you are someone who has no shame, apart from lack of God, consciousness of God, all right, go and do what you like. And we blame A for this, we blame B for that, while the truth is one of these factors mm. I pointed out. His Eminence, um, your distinguished self and His uh, Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto. On these matters of interreligious affairs, you've been holding conferences, just the recent one, when you're talking about peace. We need to have peace on which the platform development will emerge. What the Sheikh has just said, lack of God consciousness, patriotism, and accountability, 
how has it been? How have they been the bane of our development? And how do we go about them now that we have the principle of change, attitudinal change for that matter? Thank you very much. I think uh, the Sheikh has spoken in a very serious way. Mm. And uh, any serious thinking Nigerian listening to that must take it seriously because uh, Sheikh Lemu doesn't speak carelessly. What I might want to add to that, uh, to what the Sheikh has said is that very often there is a confusion even among these three elite groups. Mm. We know very well now, it's very clear now that the, the boundary between politics and business is very, very difficult to mm. And it seems that even many people go into politics in order to promote their business ventures. So we no longer have the clear distinction between business and politics. It is open secret that many politicians get have got their own companies, their contracting companies, to which they pass on uh, uh, government projects, and they sit there to determine how much to spend, to spend mm. and whether it is done or not done, how that is done well or not done well. Now we are getting seeing this. We are even in a much more serious situation because there's confusion. Many people who are called carriers are in big business. We all, we all know that. They're in big business. Uh, I do think that we must be seeking a way forward. Mm -hmm. Even without Buhari talking about change, mm -hmm. Nigerians, at some point, should begin to realize that we cannot just continue like this in a nation where things don't work and where we don't even know anymore where to approach, whom to apportion the blames to. Mm. And people you think will do things well, they get there and you are disappointed. Exactly. And uh, uh, even we who are religious leaders, when we try to to encourage those who we think are good people to enter politics, either they don't get in, or if they get in, yes, they get completely soiled. So you're doing your advisory, in your advisory capacity, so to speak, yes. you advise the society in order to follow the right path. Yes. Politicians, now, business elites. I want, I want that to come to the issue you actually presented to me, which I have ignored, namely mm. mm. interreligious um, meeting. Um, interreligious um, uh, dialogue, dialogue mm. and so on. One thing that has become very clear to me is that uh, not only is it that many times religion is blamed for things that is not really religious, mm. namely people are fighting political battles, they are fighting battles of their own uh, self-interest that yes. has nothing to do with God and anything holy, but it is put in a religious cloak and people get confused. Maybe that's what the Sheikh means when he speaks about taking advantage of the ignorance mm -hmm. of the people about the genuine elements of their faith. Mm -hmm. Those who are generally know what their faith is will not be allowed themselves to be so trusted. Not only that, but what I feel most serious is that those who should be religious leaders uh, have not done it, have not acquitted themselves sufficiently well in the whole area of promoting good relationship among Nigerians of different faiths. Mm -hmm. And I say this from, if not from research, certainly from personal experience. You reach a stage now where we're beginning to think that the problem is not really with the ordinary Nigerian, as far as religious good behavior mm -hmm. or relationship is concerned. Yes. I always say, go to Wuse Market. You are not likely to see any religious conflict. Yes, it's just yeah. transactions go on. Going mm. on. You go and buy from whoever yes. you, whose market you prefer. Whether mm. Muslim or Christian mm. doesn't really yes. matter. Yes. And yes. even when we go to our offices, mm. we go to our secretariat, in the armed forces and police, Nigerians are carrying guns mm. side by side, Muslims and Christians. Mm. And one of the beautiful things is where you we go there to uh, Eagle Square and mm. see those those beautiful fire soldiers uh, in parade, 
those who should be religious leaders uh, have not done it, have not acquitted themselves sufficiently well in the whole area of promoting good relationship among Nigerians of different faiths. Mm -hmm. When we have that, then the religious leaders will lead the people to, towards harmony and uh, when there's harmony, mm -hmm. there will be prosperity. prosperity yes. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm coming back to, to Sheikh now. Yes. yes. Yeah. You, you want to chip in something just a little? Yes. Mm. Uh, in agreement with the Cardinal. Yes. Many of what he said, we discovered in that research I'm talking about. And they have concluded to take action in accordance with the injunction mm. of Rasulullah Prophet Muhammad. Mm. He said whoever sees wrongdoing must correct it with his own hands, that is by himself. Mm. If you can't, assuming that you have no jurisdiction mm. to do it by yourself, correct it by your tongue, speak to who can correct it. Mm. If that fails, correct it by your heart, in other words, disassociate yourself mm. with it. Yes. But that is the weakest of it. Mm. So when we took that into consideration, we said to, rather than blame A, blame B, bl what can we do to ameliorate and if possible to solve the problem. So th this this bring uh, to the fore actually yes. the quintessential value of uh, what the president said change it, yes me. yes and uh, from what both of you said now the elite's problem is very 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 fundamental yes in our uh, quest to change the society yes for instance when people so the community glorified ill doings, corruption and whatever. Yeah. What will you be your advice? And um, how do you see the value of that? If permit me, uh, 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 his eminence, when Genesis talk about God saying that we created man in our own image. In our own image we created a man and female, we created them. And sort of the things in the Yes. But at the end of the day, if you don't follow the right way, so what a dead now as well as right. Exactly. So how do you advise Nigerians, cleansing the heart for better society. Okay. Number one, mm. call them religious leaders, clerics, call them lecturers, professors, mm. and so forth. By various means, say to yourself, how do we inculcate God consciousness and consciousness of accountability before God? Mm in the whole nation. Point number one. When that is done, or in the process of, it's not a uh, one year job, ten year, mm. one decade job. No, when that goes on, look into our educational curriculum or curricula. Mm. How that, should religion be taught in such a way that God consciousness is inculcated in our children from primary right to university and that's why the findings of our research and materials written about it, uh, on the research we tested it on university lecturers professors and so forth and on tertiary institutions and we found the result to be fantastic and we call the program ethical reform program yes Another program attached to it is what we call TTC, Train the Trainers Course in Islam and Dialogue for Peaceful Coexistence. Mm. So if you think of peaceful coexistence, because if there is no peace, there cannot be progress in anything. So development of the society begins with the foundation. Exactly. The education of the child inculcating good values. Precisely. Yes, yeah, his eminence, you comment on that. Yes. Um, The, the whole thing, there is a, there is a role for the state, mm. which uh, if the state does not play its role, it's very difficult for other people to do so. Let me take a, take a good example. 
a situation where evil doing is uh, not only uh, ignored but seems to be even encouraged yeah makes teaching of ethics extremely difficult we are I mean, as religious leaders we have often heard our young boys coming and telling us oh what you whom we have taught well say oh what you are saying is very good very right very good but you know out there in the world a different rule is operating in, when I was a young, smaller boy in primary, secondary school, we were told honesty is the best policy, and we have be, we believed it. Hmm. We believed it because we saw it. We saw that honest people went uh, went well, and we also saw dishonest people being disgraced. Now, when you when I look at my nephews now, they are not seeing this as much as I used to see it as a child. They are seeing dishonest people just getting on well. Hmm. And they are seeing honest people, as it were, just left where they are. And the result is you have a kind of a moral setup, situation where morality doesn't seem to count hmm. anymore. And, uh, and here the, is where religious inst institutions and the state have come equally, both of them have equal um, we have to call rule, uh, rule duty mm -hmm. to, to play. Yes. And what makes it a bit more complicated in Nigeria is that we have generally Christians and Muslims in this country. And uh, therefore, when, you, when government comes into the picture, uh, government is always wanting to abdicate its responsibility mm -hmm. by saying, oh, we don't want to appear to be siding with the Muslims or we don't want to appear to be siding with the, with the Christians. But I tell anybody in government that listen, the Yoruba will say what is not good is not good. Yes. Would you die? Good. Die. Good die. <laughs> Meaning, Meaning uh, we know the we know what is bad. Yes, we know the books. And it has nothing to do with whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. Mm. You know it's bad to be dishonest. You know it's bad to be to to be to be deceiving people. Yes. Uh, and this we must work on. Yes. Uh, if we if there is a little bit more in that regard, and that these the structures of state are working mm. well to in such a way that uh, impunity is reduced to the minimum, mm. and and uh, and. Uh, and the rules are good rules are laid out and and uh, enforced yes then it is easier for the religious well, people. thank you very much his eminence i know when we have jurists like you and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't finish the discussion today but, well, but we hope to have some other times and inshallah. if you will oblige us inshallah that we come over i, I hope thank next you. time we meet we yes. shall be we, can, we shall be we shall talk in a more in a more uh, uh, optimistic <laughs> yes. way. Yes. Mm. But right now, we have not just an economic emergency before us, mm. we have a moral emergency mm. before us in the country. Yeah. And I'm glad to tell you, yes. while I support what that uh, mm. feminist has said, mm. from the test of all the research results, mm. the answer and the result are fantastic. Mm. You can see university lecturers and the students sitting side by side whenever we invite them for this course. So there's always the light at the end of the And the right? interaction. Mm. So, as the Cardinal said, government should invest not only economy, 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 or this and that, Look, consider morality mm. and God consciousness yes. and consciousness of accountability yes. before God. Yes. Seriously. Thank you very much, Sheikh Ahmed Abu Bakr Lemu, for Thank honoring you. my invitation. Thank, Thank you. you very much. His own eminence, General Kandinan, uh, on our Thank country. you very much. Yes. Give me the opportunity <laughs> Thank you very much, to sir. talk to our audience. Yeah. Thank you. Nigeria will survive Thank and you. more than survive. What Nigeria will survive and more than survive this will be, <laughs> yeah. as Eminem said, yeah. the light of the end of the tunnel. And uh, thank you. What, what, what we need to do actually is a nation. 
is uh, emancipation of the entire entirety requires the participation of all and uh, Nigeria is a land of many countries but a land of many bounties um, we hope that all hands will be on deck for better society for today for the good of the day and for better tomorrow I am Maliu Baba Baro. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.